How, anybody here had a Trenta? A Trenta, yes, no? Okay, so that's this guy over here. So it's not hot coffee, it's a cold coffee drink flavored with you know what, and it is 916 cc's. Well, your stomach is 900 cc's, it's bigger than your stomach. <laughs> so you'd say, well, there's your answer, QED, it's all over, right? How about this, I love this, this came in the mail. Free fr chicken sandwich from KFC with the purchase of a 30 ounce drink. The food's gotten so cheap, we're giving it away? That's where we are. Or is it the opposite side of the equation? Is it an activity famine? So this is a study that was done looking at physical activity here on the y-axis against age, nine years old to 19 years old, for white girls and black girls. And you can see that by the time they hit age 15, the black girls are just lying prostrate on the floor because <laughs> there's no physical activity whatsoever. So you say, well, there's your answer. That's why everyone's obese because they're eating too much and they're exercising too little. Gluttony and sloth, diet and exercise, just like common sense tells you. Well, you know what? I don't believe in common sense. I believe in data. And the fact is, the research tells us something very different. So, is this behavior, is it personal responsibility? What do you think? There are six reasons to doubt this. Number one, no child chooses to be obese. The quality of an obese life of an obese child is the same as a patient on cancer chemotherapy. Why would anyone choose this? In fact, children are ostracized. Does, second, does diet work? Now, everybody knows somebody who lost weight on a diet. And then, of course, they gained it all back. And that's what all the data shows. And the number of people who can actually maintain their weight loss for any length of time is vanishingly small. And if it weren't true, you wouldn't be sitting here listening to me because you'd say, well, why do I have to listen to him? Does exercise work? So here are studies of exercise, and this is the identity line here, and you can see when compared with no treatment, exercise resulted in very small weight loss across the board. One BMI point. Vigorous exercise, 1.5 BMI points. Considering we are all seven to eight BMI points more than we should be, you know, that ain't gonna cut it. Because exercise does not cause weight loss. Does not cause weight loss. What does exercise do? It causes muscle gain. And that's good, because muscle have mitochondria. Mitochondria burn energy. So you stay insulin sensitive because you have a place to put your energy instead of in your liver where it causes problems. So exercise is the single best thing you can do for yourself. But if you think it's gonna show up on the scale, think again. The prevalence of obesity is going up in the group that you can least ascribe personal responsibility to, the toddler. The two to five year old group is going up the fastest. You wanna say that that's personal responsibility? Oh, so you say it's the personal responsibility of the parent, right, for letting them have the sugar pops and the, you know, and the sodas and the fruit juices and everything, that's the parent's fault. Except for one thing, we even have an epidemic of obese six month olds and they don't diet and exercise. So any hypothesis you want to proffer, you have to explain this as well. And it's even worse than that because we have obesity in newborns. Newborns, okay? Birth weight's gone up by 200 grams all over the world. All over the world over the last 25 years. And when you look at, when you do DEXA scans to figure out what the body composition is, it's all fat. It's all fat. So these babies are laying down more fat before they're ever born, and fat cells want to get filled. That's why we have obese six-month-olds, because everybody's laying down more fat. So the question is, how? Why? Why are they laying down more fat today? Well, it's clearly mother's diet. But do you want to blame the newborn for that problem? Is that their problem? Is that their fault? So you want to blame the pregnant mother. Well, you know, then you know, it just goes backward like that. So you basically blame everybody or blame nobody. I blame nobody. Actually, I do blame somebody, but you're gonna get there at the end. So we're talking about behavior, right? Behavior. So this is the definition of behavior. This is all from the or original video. A stereotyped motor response to a physiological stimulus. So let's take that apart. Stereotyped, same every time. So yes, eating is a behavior. Motor, muscles have to move, a thought is not a behavior. And finally, physiological, and that's where I come in. What's the physiology behind the obesity epidemic? Why do you eat too much and exercise too little? Because all behaviors have a biochemical basis. 
Now, sometimes we're smart enough to know what it is, and sometimes we're not smart enough to know what it is. I'll give you an example, schizophrenia. For 100 years, schizophrenia was a behavioral disorder. Now we know it's a defect in dopamine neurotransmission and probably actually a defect in glucose transport across the brain. Okay? These are biochemical problems that ultimately manifest themselves as a behavioral disorder. This is no different. So what are the biochemical underpinnings behind gluttony and sloth? That's the question. And so that's what we're going to try to answer now. So in order to answer that, you actually have to know some science. And I'm going to make this very brief and very quick. We're going to talk about these two hormones right over here called leptin and insulin. So leptin is a hormone that comes from your fat cell, goes to your brain, and tells your brain you have enough energy on board to engage in normal, expensive metabolic processes. You can burn energy at a normal rate and feel good doing it. Okay? And it tells your brain you've got enough energy on board. If your leptin goes down or if your brain doesn't see your leptin, then your brain sees that as starvation. Everybody got that? Insulin is equally interesting because insulin tells your fat cell one thing. It says store energy, and it tells your brain something else. It tells your brain, stop. I'm in the middle of metabolizing a meal. I don't need any more. Let me deal with what I got. And so it's part of the satiety signal. So it tells your fat cell, get bigger, and it tells your brain, stop feeding your fat cell. 